Hello, my North Carolina realtors. I'm Lee Brown. I am in Charlotte, North Carolina, right the second. I've got an office in Concord, North Carolina, and you know you're from North Carolina when you can pronounce Concord, right? And I'm very honored to be the first of the Mobile Mondays, and I don't really have an agenda for today because this is supposed to be about a pick-me-up for you, some quick tips to help make your real estate lives better. So, I thought that today I would talk about some of the things I was working on with a client earlier in looking at new construction. So, oftentimes as realtors, we talk to buyers and we think that we're showing them resale houses over and over and then suddenly they are looking at new construction and we have to defend our value proposition for why they need us when they're building a home because often many realtors aren't super comfortable with construction. So. Here's a couple of things that I've learned in my realtor lifetime of 17 years and what I got from being the daughter of a realtor and the granddaughter of a custom builder. If you didn't know it, I'm third generation in this business and actually my grandma was one of the first of the female realtors a um, long time ago. So. When you are wanting to know more about new construction and why buyers should use you as their realtor, you've got to know what value you bring to that process because often the on-site sales rep is licensed. They already do a great job for their builder and for the buyer. So what do you bring to this? First of all, get to know your builders in your local market. Go visit the on-sites, go visit the models and ask the project managers or the superintendents to take you on a Muddy Boots tour. Particularly if you're a newer realtor, this might be uncomfortable for you, so you've got to stretch into that very uncomfortable place where you can learn more and understand why the footings go where they go and what takes them so long and how does the framing process work and what is sheathing and how do the mechanicals work and that way when your client is wanting to build a house and the on-site rep is talking about the, prop the property getting dried in if you're a newer agent, you might not know what it means for the house to get dried in. So go get yourself educated. It's a fascinating pro um, process for you. Hey, Rosemary, I see Fayetteville's with me. Make sure that you are really educated on this process. I've talked to plenty of builder reps and they get irritated with realtors who show up and are afraid to go out and walk in the mud because if you're going to sell new construction, you're going to get dirty. So keep some cheap galoshes in your car if you don't want to get your fancy shoes dirty or be like me and be cheap and just don't buy fancy shoes. And so the next thing I want you to think about is now that you know a little more about the process, and in fact many builders do educational things for a whole office, if you are a broker, hey Wade, make sure that you take all your agents out and get educated on the whole process and what this builder does. So you're going to get thought, cut through the process when the buyer says, I don't know why I need you. The builder said they cut me a deal if I cut you out. Well, you need to know that most of the builders do have a marketing budget built in, which includes the commission to pay the realtor. You just need to make sure that there's a reason to have you along. So does a buyer need an inspection on new construction? Absolutely they do. And wait, I know that you represent a lot of builders and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Houses are built by humans and so when they're built by humans they have mistakes but don't bring the inspector just at the very end your best home inspectors will come twice in the process and one is before the house is dried in so they can see the mechanicals and actually if you've got clients that really enjoy the details those engineers and accountants have them walk through with a digital camera or with a video so that they can see where the studs are located and they can see where the fiber optic is running through the walls and where the pipes are, especially in the bathroom. So lots of good information that they can have prepared for themselves. And if you have clients that are relocating from another area, this is a wonderful service to provide. Maybe you could visit that new construction site every week, take photos and put together an album for them on Flickr. One of my favorite realtors, who by the way is on my team now because I still her is Virginia and she used to take pictures of these houses all along and she'd make it into a lovely tabletop book as a wonderful closing gift and you can get those printed y'all for like 20 bucks but it's really got some good heft and people who build a house love seeing the whole process from the beginning so you could make that part of your value proposition that you're going to be out at that job site with them or without them, but that you'll be their eyes and ears on the ground. The on-site rep could do it, but you gotta remember, they're working for the builder. The on-site rep wants to sell 
that house to them one time, but you, the realtor, should have relationships with these builders and with the on-site reps because you represent multiple people. So you could be selling five or six or 11 houses in a neighborhood, whereas Mr. and Mrs. Buyer are gonna buy one. So when you are representing your people well, Make sure they understand that as a good realtor who's paying attention and not trying to muddy the works up, because I know some agents like to justify their commission by being a pain in the tail and getting in the way of the deal, that's not your job. Your job is to be the eyes and ears and help them ask questions and be very in tune with the process. When you're that kind of realtor, your clients will know that the builder's actually going to pay better attention to you because you do represent future business for them. And I've seen this happen, y'all, so many times. My clients got better attention than the unrepresented buyers because that on-site agent did not want to tick me off or the agents in my office because they know that as realtors, we love to talk and you talk a lot about this stuff. So anyway, that's one of the values you can provide is to be their eyes and ears in the process to help provide the appropriate professionals like inspectors. Many builders don't include a final survey. They do a preliminary survey and then if the buyer wants one, it's up to the buyer. So as a professional realtor, I do hope y'all are always recommending a survey because things do move, including floodplains. FEMA redrew the maps. You need to know if there's an encroachment from a fence or if a corner of the property falls into the floodplain or the impervious area. The house I sold, to, well, I haven't sold it yet. We're working on it. The house I might sell today is in Huntersville, which is a north and slightly west suburb of Charlotte where there's a lot of impervious area. And if you don't know what impervious area is, that means the area where the water can't get to the ground. So you think about this as what is concreted, like a driveway is impervious area, but pavers with grass in between are not. So you gotta know the language. Anyway, in looking at this, it was gonna affect the ability of my buyers to add a pool to this place they're looking to build a house. One of my jobs is to help them understand impervious area because the builder rep likes to talk about how they can work with the town on a variance and y'all you better know these municipalities sometimes do and sometimes don't work on variances which is another reason that as a realtor you point out to your clients that you are involved in the advocacy process and so you understand which public officials to call because you're involved and engaged and when you are a realtor who is investing in the political activities that the realtors do to protect property rights I'm going to tell you what, those political people return your phone calls. So make sure you talk about your involvement as a reason for buyers to use you in building a house. Now, I'm going to give you all another little tip to make life easy. So let's say they've agreed to use you and they're under contract. Now, I like to have my buyers go out and visit a house, particularly at this time of year when it's hot as the blazes and, you know, it's not the heat. It's the humidity, as we like to say. Have them carry a styrofoam cooler out to the job site with some Coca-Cola and some bottles of water in it. Y'all, that makes a huge difference to these workers that are framing and roofing and doing this really, really hot work in the middle of a North Carolina summer. Now, they don't always speak the same language that you speak. That does not mean they're not human beings that get hot doing the work to build this house. So we will always take a cooler full of cold drinks out and that is a reason for the builder to appreciate you as realtor and appreciate your buyers because you are taking care of their people. And I know it's just a human thing, but when people are kind to you, you do nicer things for them. And I have seen a lot of subcontractors that have really gone to bat and they just pay a little better attention for my clients because my clients have noticed that they're out there working and they take care of them. And that's an investment y'all of like 10 bucks to really take care of people. Think about doing things like that. And then once you have gotten them through the process, so we talked about getting a surveyor at the end, getting an inspector out there. At the end, when it's time to do the final walkthrough of the house, understand that that's not about you. You've got to stop thinking everything's about you all the time. I know I'm, I'd like to think I'm great too, but remember that that's your buyer's opportunity to find out things about the warranty on the house, to find out information about the subcontractors that built it, to find out where the main water shutoff is and what that little sewer clean out thing is in the front that a lot of people cover up with mulch 
don't cover up the sewer clean that with mulch that's a bad bad idea so when you're in there your job is not to beat the builder up your job is to be again their eyes and ears maybe make some notes run your ipad voice recorder for them so they'll remember that moment and then when it's time to put the blue tape in the house don't be a jack leg you don't go up to the wall and do this at it that is bad bad form you're looking for visible imperfections bowed studs things that would affect them in the long run so you can help them mark it up but just don't 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 be like that don't be that way now I'll tell you a couple of other tips you can give clients on new construction is if they want to keep that glass clean and that beautiful frameless shower they upgraded put one coat of rain -X on it that helps the soap scum and water come off but not two coats like you do on your windshield do one coat of rain -X, helps tremendously and if they've got cultured marble countertops tell them to put a coat of turtle wax on top because that will help if the children come in there and mush the lipstick into the top because that cultured marble can stain so put a layer of turtle wax on these are the kind of tips you can provide to your buyers that shows them you're going to be with them now you're going to be with them in the future because when you're ready to go help them sell that house five years from now this will be when you'd like to find really pretty glass in the frameless shower and you'd like to find a stain-free cultured marble countertop. And by the way, if they've got granite in the house, remind them to seal that granite every six months because it is a naturally occurring substance. It is porous. And especially if they're cooks who like to fix chicken, they should totally seal those granite tops and take care of their home. Oh, and by the way, I almost forgot to mention, when you're thinking about building a home, you often go to the design center and spend money you ain't got on things you do not need. And so your job as a realtor at the design center, if you schedule that time to go, is to help them know what's well worth spent and what's not. So for example, upgrading the carpet to level three may or may not be a good use of money depending on the client, but upgrading the pad is always worth it. So always get your clients to upgrade that pad as high up as they can to the eight pound because it reduces traffic, it reduces wear and tear, and it means that when you come back to sell it five years from now, you might not be giving them the bad news that they've got to replace the rugs already if they are clean living. So just remind them that that's what you're there for. You're there to be their resource throughout the process. You're there to be their eyes and ears, and you're there for them when they're ready to do something different in their life. So I hope this will help you a little bit in your realtor life. If you have questions or need anything, I'm always willing to help because as North Carolina Carolina Realtors. We're one of the strongest associations out there simply because we care about each other and we share to make others better so the industry will have a different reputation in the future. Y'all take care out there and go sell some houses.